two, three. Welcome back to my educational lab, where I discuss all the car things which are important to you. In my last video, I talked about batteries and charging, but today I will focus solely on the driving range, which is probably one of your biggest worries if you're considering purchasing an electric car. So let's try to shed some light on it, because remember, an ill-fitted car leads to nothing but misery and regret. So when a car manufacturer declares an electric range to be 500 kilometers, about 300 miles, what exactly does this mean? And most important, can you trust them? In my lab today, I've got the gorgeous Genesis G80 Electrified. I have reviewed both versions of this car, electric and petrol, and why? Well, because the real beauty and luxury in today's world is simply having a choice. So let's get moving, let's hit the road, and let's talk about electric range. So your battery size determines how far you can go. It's pretty simple, but there are several factors which will greatly impact your range and the biggest by far is well speed <laughs> which means the faster you go and the harder you are on the throttle the quicker you will drain your battery so fun and games will not only cost you money but also time well just like with everything else in life God Almighty, this Genesis feels punchy! <laughs> you see, car manufacturers declare a certain electric range, just like they do with fuel economy for combustion engine cars. Sadly, very often it is a one big fat lie. But at least with combustion engine cars, they do tell you it is a combination of city and motorway. So you get a gist of it. You get a little bit closer to the truth. With EVs, it is far more complex, simply because we've got many factors coming into play. But what a declared electric range certainly isn't indicating is flying high on the motorway. It usually means a little bit of motorway, but mainly trotting around town in mild temperatures. Pretty much an ideal environment for an electric car. But looking at car makers' declarations, truth be told, you can never be really sure. False promises can be heartbreaking, I know. Which is why I'm here to guide you. But as a rule of thumb, you will use far more energy on the motorway than you would do in town. It's pretty much the very opposite of a combustion engine, unless it's a hybrid. And right away, smart matching comes to my mind, which is why I came up with an online tool called CarMatch. I put the link to it on the screen. Moral of the story is different horses for different courses, but you gotta know the horse and you gotta know the course. What about going uphill or traveling with an electric car through the mountains? A lot of people moan and complain. They start to go up and they panic. Oh my God, I'm gonna run out of my battery. The manufacturer has lied to me. Bollocks. God almighty, human nature is designed to bitch. Listen, I drive with electric cars through very high mountain passes in the Alps on a regular basis, including winter time. I go up, I go down, and when I'm finished, my range is usually exactly the same, if not greater than it was to when I started. 
no need to panic. We've got regenerative braking, which means every time the car slows down, it charges your battery. So downhilling, braking, it's all good for you. Again, it's very much the opposite of a combustion engine where the energy is lost. Here, the energy gets put back to your pockets and anything that goes up must come down. Another very important factor influencing your range is, of course, the temperature. EVs like mild weather, not too hot, not too cold. They very much dislike freezing temperatures, simply because they have to work that much harder, and who likes that, to keep the car and the battery warm. Now, depending on the car, and by the way, all these factors depend on the car, just to make it more complex, every EV is different. But let's say you're driving on the motorway and it's minus 20. The range reduction can be as shocking as 50%. important yet often overlooked factor are your lights. So driving when it's dark outside, grey, it's raining and in many countries throughout the winter where lights are mandatory. Just to give an idea, last week I was traveling at night, it was about four to five degrees Celsius on the plus side. The car was already warm but at times my lights were actually consuming more energy than my air conditioning heating and of course full beam adds another layer of consumption. Last but certainly not least is the overall health of your battery that needs to be taken into consideration. How well you have taken care of it, history comes knocking on your door and it will certainly punish you. We're a good girl, we're a good boy. I have discussed this in my previous video but as a general rule the fitter your battery the further you will go, of course. Are you more confused now that you were before you started watching this video? How do you really know? What's the bloody range? Well, a good place to start would actually be car videos on YouTube. You want to be looking for unbiased, independent car reviews like mine, where you don't get paid by the manufacturer for saying what you're saying. The next step, if you can, will be to test drive the car for several days. Drive it in your environment. Drive the car like you would drive any other car in your normal life. Ideally, you want to test drive it over different season, but that means car buying spreads over an entire year. You don't want that. And as delightful as some dealers are, most would probably kick you out. So the safest bet would actually be one of the coldest days in your area or the area that you travel to, including nighttime. Because from here, it only gets better. I mean, electric cars get so battered in the winter. Don't test drive the car on a glorious, warm, sunny day. Because it's a bit like a first date. You can be blind as a bat and you're setting yourself up potentially for a huge disappointment. Now, as you can see, there's so much information to electric cars. I do hope I was able to highlight some of the important features. What's important to mention is that I am completely unbiased. What I care about is that you find the perfect car for you. But I'm not over yet. In my next video, hopefully last, I'll discuss driving dynamics. And I will tell you what I really think of electric cars. Thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you in my next video. Bye!